This video classroom lesson is sponsored by Transmission Bench. Visit the transmissionbench.com store for the deluxe super kit, other parts, and even the video classroom lessons used during this project. Hundreds of years ago, before continents were fully explored, map makers labeled unknown areas as unexplored, forbidden, or some other vague dark description that meant danger or implied bad things would happen to you if you dared to go there. It could even be the end of the world and you might fall off. The truth in many cases was a rewarding lush paradise existed just beyond the exclusion zone for those brave enough to look for themselves. Transmission repair can seem like a scary journey too, even for auto technicians. As your personal guide on this machine, it's my job to work with you and point out how friendly and easy to work on it really is. Transmission repair has been very rewarding to me and I want to help you learn this valuable skill too. Come on in and have a seat. This is Chrysler. 46RE class, part two, lesson two. In the last lesson, we disassembled the pump as well as the forward and direct clutch drums. The goals of this lesson are, first of all, to have a discussion about cleaning and a final inspection of parts, along with making a list of what will need to be replaced. I'll also introduce the rebuilding kit and other replacement parts we'll install during the reassembly. Finally, we'll build an easy to make fixture to hold the transmission case. We need to take one last thorough look at all of the individual parts which we've placed onto this bench and make a list of the ones that are damaged. A great way to inspect each of them is during cleaning. You can begin with the main case and overdrive housing. The aluminum case and overdrive housing are the only parts which should be cleaned with water and detergent. In other words, you can take them to the car wash or use a high pressure washer or even a steam cleaner. Make sure that you blow dry the few steel parts such as this apply lever in the case and the parkingism and bearing in the overdrive housing as soon as possible to minimize rust. Inspect all of the bolt holes for damage. It is very common to find one or more pan bolt holes with stripped threads. I actually had to install three helicoil inserts into this case. Inspect the valve body bolt holes too. I recommend mineral spirits for cleaning everything else. It won't oxidize steel and it will not harm plastic or electronic parts. It's also much safer. The fumes aren't as bad and it won't ignite. Sometimes it's labeled as paint thinner. Gasoline, kerosene, paint reducer, and other products such as acetone or alcohol should not be used. They're either too harsh or too flammable. I put about a half a gallon into a small container like this one and use a brush designed for cleaning small parts. Wear gloves to protect your hands. I recommend washing one part from the bench at a time blowing it dry with shop air if you have it available, and then setting it back onto the parts bench. Have a notebook close by. Write down the name or simply a description of any part you find damaged. You can begin with the output shaft and ring gear assembly. As I mentioned in an earlier lesson, our demo transmission has already been cleaned for clarity. Your parts, on the other hand, should still be dripping with old fluid and may have a black smudgy film on them.
wash it in the tank, dry it off, and inspect it. Check this roller bearing. It should feel silky smooth as you rotate it. If it feels rough or makes any sort of chattering sound, it's an indication that the races are pitted, which means the bearing will have to be replaced. A new one is available from the transmissionbench.com store. It is item number 12271. This one feels great. Take a close look at the teeth of the ring gear. Make sure that none are chipped or missing. The bore for the roller clutch should be smooth and straight. I'm satisfied this assembly is okay to reuse, but if you find any damage to your parts, take a second or two to write down a few notes and then set them back onto the parts bench. To stay organized, work on only a few pieces at a time. Clean the overdrive direct clutch housing and snap rings next. I always find a lot of black pasty sediment built up in this part. Take these to the tank, scrub them with a brush, and then return them here. Work with the roller clutch, inner race, and thrust bearing next. After cleaning, check the rollers. They should be straight and smooth. Inspect the accordion springs closely. Sometimes they are broken at the folds. The plastic cage should be healthy. Exposure to extreme heat can distort and melt it preventing the rollers from moving freely. If any springs have failed or if the cage appears damaged, this entire caged assembly should be replaced. This is item number 12650. The bushing journal of the inner race should be smooth and straight. Hold the thrust bearing and apply pressure while you rotate the upper race with your other hand. It should feel smooth and chatter free. If it's hard to turn or feels pitted, it needs to be replaced. This one feels fine, but if yours doesn't, make a note of it by writing down the part name. This part is called the inner sprag race to output shaft thrust bearing. It's item number 12222. The individual planetary gears of the overdrive planet carrier should be inspected. After cleaning, make sure they can turn freely with no binding or tight spots. There should be side to side play but you should not be able to rock them side to side. If you can, this indicates needle bearing damage and a carrier assembly which will have to be replaced. Check every gear. All of these feel fine. You need to check the overdrive direct clutch pack end plates. Use a straight edge or anything flat to make sure they are not dished or distorted. They should be perfectly flat. These are in mint condition.
This is the overdrive direct clutch snap ring. It should always be replaced. It's a wavy type which has a reputation for failing because of flexing and fatigue. Never reuse it. Even though this one is intact, it would have failed at some point. Wash, save, and return it here for now, but make a note to get a new one. It is item number D12864. Inspect the overdrive sun gear, thrust bearing, and bearing support. The teeth should appear as these do without any evidence of damage, such as missing teeth or blackened color from overheating. Check the thrust bearing as we did with the other one. It should turn smoothly with no drag or tight spots. This bearing and support are available as a package. It's item number 12220. Check the end plates of the overdrive clutch pack next. It is common to find them damaged and deformed from excessive heat caused by slipping. Use a machinist straight edge or other flat tool to check for any distortion. Although these are discolored, they are flat and can be reused. There are variations in plate thickness depending on year and model. For example, 46RH and 46RE gas models typically have end plates like these which measure 216 thousandths of an inch in thickness. It is item number 12141. On some 1990 to 1992 models, one of the plates may be thicker, measuring 373 thousandths of an inch or approximately three-eighths of an inch. It is item number 12140. The plates in a 48RE model are uniquely different. One plate is stepped and measures 235 thousandths of an inch in thickness and looks like this. It is item number 221 for one G. The other plate is flat and measures 237 thousandths of an inch and looks like this. It is item number 12140B. If any of the end plates need to be replaced, write the description and item number down. This is the overdrive piston to hub thrust washer. Place it into your palm and check it as you did with other bearings. This is an example of a badly damaged one. It will not turn freely. Heat and lack of lubrication has ruined it inside. The item number for this bearing is D. One, two, two, one, four. This is what a new Mopar brand thrust bearing looks like. This one feels great. If you need one for your transmission, make a note of it. Take a second look at the pump assembly. Take it apart again, clean it, and inspect it one more time. Check the reverse band and reverse drum. Look at the band lining to make sure it is healthy. 
it should look like this one. The drum surface should be smooth with only faint wear marks where the band applies around it. Look closely at the planetary gear sets, ring gears, thrust washers, and the drive shell. I rarely find problems with the planetary gears, but check them for needle bearing damage. They will have in play, but you should not be able to cock, or in other words, rock them side to side. The direct clutch drum should have a smooth surface for the soft friction material of the kickdown band to apply. If the bare steel backing of a worn out band comes into contact with the drum surface, the direct clutch drum will have to be replaced. In my experience, it's not worth the effort to resurface it or attempt to clean up gouges with sandpaper. Check the inner ceiling ring area. If the ceiling rings have gouged or cut into this bore, the drum will never fully seal with the rings on the stator support. A replacement drum is available. This clutch pack end plate should be flat. It's item number U22146. Re-examine the parts of the forward clutch. As I mentioned before, this direct clutch inner hub is available new if yours is damaged. Make a note to order item number 22575B. If the Belleville spring is cracked, replace it with item number 22974B. If the black plastic spacer is melted or broken, it should be replaced. The item number is 22853. Finally, check the forward clutch pack end plates. Like other end plates, they must be checked for flatness with a ruler or straight edge. For demonstration, I'm going to replace both of them. The apply plate, which goes against the Belleville spring, is item number U22149. This is what a new one looks like. The end plate, which is against the snap ring on the end of the drum, is item number U22146. It is the same as the direct clutch end plate. This is a new one. Almost 50% of 46RE transmissions I work on need a new intermediate shaft support and piston retainer. It's not unusual to find damage such as smeared aluminum here where the reverse drum rides and here the bore for the intermediate shaft. It's caused by restriction in the cooling system, which I'll discuss in more detail later. This support is ruined. A universal replacement, which will fit 46, 47, and 48 RE, as well as the earlier 46 and 47 RH, is available. It's item number A22634B. Check the low reverse roller clutch assembly. 
carefully wash it, and inspect the individual rollers and accordion springs for any damage. If you need a new one, it's item number A22654A. The valve body will be disassembled, cleaned, and discussed in the final lessons of the class, but there is one part to inspect now. The overdrive accumulator spring is located in this housing and it fails quite often. Remove the two or three bolts depending on which filter you have, which fasten the filter with a T25 Torx bit to gain access to this end plate. Remove the five bolts which fasten it to the aluminum housing. Check to see if the spring is broken. This one is okay and can be reused, but I suggest that you replace it with a stronger, more durable, updated spring. It is item number 22936. For now, replace the spring, end plate, and bolts as well as the old filter and the bolts which fasten it. We'll take apart and clean the entire valve body in later lessons. The pan, by the way, can be cleaned now with detergent and water or mineral spirits. Clean and inspect any other parts and return them to the parts bench. Now let's take a look at the new parts we'll be using as we reassemble the transmission. In addition to replacements for any of the parts we just inspected, you'll also need this kit which contains all of the other ingredients we'll be installing during the rest of this class. This is one of the high quality kits available from the TransmissionBench.com store and it's appropriate for our 1996 demonstration model. It's the Deluxe Super Kit, item number, DLX SK46-2 and it fits 1996 and 1997 46RE and 
47RE transmissions. It consists of a master overhaul kit and other parts you should always replace during a rebuild. Let's take a closer look. The master overhaul kit portion of the super kit contains the overhaul package and all of the friction and steel plates needed for this transmission. The overhaul package includes cork and paper gaskets, front pump extension housing and other metal clad seals, lip seals, O-rings, and many other small parts. Many of the parts are thoughtfully sub-packaged for easy identification. Also included are data sheets which inform you of updates, indicate check ball locations, and even list bolt torque specifications. Habla Espanol, the same information is in Spanish on the back of each page. The master overhaul kit also includes new friction and steel plates for the forward and direct clutch packs in the main case, as well as a full set of friction and steel plates for the overdrive and direct overdrive clutch packs in the overdrive section. The Deluxe Super Kit also includes a kickdown band, both early and late style filters, pump direct clutch drum and extension housing bushings, and a new overdrive direct clutch snap ring. You'll also get a spare park rod e-clip and intermediate shaft snap ring just in case you might need them. The kit has electronic parts that you should always replace too. They are the overdrive and lockup solenoid assembly with wiring harness, governor pressure solenoid, governor pressure sensor, and output speed sensor. Everything in the Deluxe Super Kit is of the highest quality known. Every part meets or exceeds original equipment manufacturer specifications. They are made by Ray Bestos, Toledo, Filtran, Borg Warner, Mopar, and Rostra. These are the parts I use professionally and I urge you to demand them too. They fit right, work right, and last. The video lessons of this class and this kit make up your recipe for a successful transmission rebuilding experience. One more thing, you may be tempted to economize on your project by purchasing only the master overhaul kit and maybe a few other parts, but without buying the electronic parts. Don't do it. The solenoids and sensors of this transmission are notorious for failure and should always be replaced. I learned over 20 years ago to avoid any shifting problems by throwing all the old electronic components into the trash. Once again, don't reuse them. And use only OEM replacements made by Borg Warner, Rostra, or Mopar. Now let's look at the new parts to replace the damaged ones we made notes about. We discovered seven other damaged parts during the teardown and cleaning of our demo transmission, which can be ordered from the individual parts section at the transmission bench store. First of all, we found the original overdrive piston to hub thrust bearing discolored, seized up, and unfit to reuse. This is the new Mopar brand replacement. It's item number D12214. Remember how the direct clutch friction plates ruined the direct inner hub? We'll use the shop press to install this new inner hub onto the input shaft. It's item number 
2275B. The apply plate and end plate of the forward clutch assembly will be replaced. Even though the original ones actually checked out to be flat, I want you to see what new ones look like. We'll use this new apply plate, item number U22149, and a new end plate, item number U22146. As I mentioned earlier, the intermediate shaft support and piston housing is one of the most commonly damaged parts in this transmission family. The discolored, melted, and smeared metal is caused by restriction in the transmission cooling system. Tiny particles of clutch material clog the heat exchanger tube in the vehicle radiator preventing adequate cooling line flow from the radiator to the transmission. The cooler fluid from the radiator normally flows through the rear cooling line into the case and then to this port to cool and lubricate the intermediate shaft through this hole. This hole normally delivers fluid to the reverse drum hub. This is the new universal replacement support housing we'll install later. It fits all years and all models and it's item number A22634B. Check your vehicle transmission cooling system flow by forcing compressed shop air into the line which connects to the case at the front of the transmission. In other words, the air should go into the line which you disconnected from this fitting because a one-way check valve in the system will prevent flow in the other direction. If your system is clogged, you must replace the vehicle radiator or abandon the transmission cooling section for a lower cost solution. Even though the cost of new radiators has come down over the years, it's a cheaper alternative to reroute the cooling lines to an aftermarket auxiliary cooler such as this Hayden brand cooler. It's easy to install and it won't clog. It measures 7.5 inches by 16 inches so it will fit most vehicles. If you need one, it's item number OC-1404. The last part we made a note of was the overdrive accumulator spring. They break quite often and you should replace it with a new updated one. Is item number 22936. The last goal of this lesson is to spend a few minutes explaining how to build a fixture to support the transmission during reassembly. You can make it quickly from inexpensive lumber and wood screws. You can begin mocking up a finished transmission by temporarily bolting the empty overdrive housing to the main case. You only need to install four of the bolts. Two here. and two here. The list of materials you need is simply three eight foot two by fours and about 42 three inch long wood screws. The tools I used were a circular saw, portable drill screw gun, eighth inch drill bit, square, tape measure, and of course, 
safety glasses. In order to make the box, cut a total of 12 pieces. You'll need four 15 inches in length. four 18 inches long, and another four sections 26 inches long. Attach two 15 inch and two 18 inch sections together like so to make the upper and lower parts of the box frame. The result is a square which measures 18 inches on each side. Now you can add the 26 inch upright section. Attach the top section. Finally add these three pieces which will form a triangular structure to support the case. Here are the dimensions. Position two of the pieces so that these bolts rest on them. Finally place the 18 inch long section underneath the case pan rail to complete a wedge like clamp to hold the case. An investment in time and materials to make this tool is worth it. Even with years of experience, I would not attempt to put this transmission together with it laying on its side. It would be very awkward and frustrating. That's it for this lesson. In part two, lesson three, we'll begin the reassembly of a light new transmission, starting with the overdrive section. When you're ready, meet me there.